Thanks so much for your time. We spoke to you about these changes were made. Where have we landed, Tanya? Are you a little bit more comfortable with what has eventually passed Parliament than you were a couple of weeks ago? Well, Laura, it's a very different beast um, now to what it was on the 26th of October when it first was tabled in the Legislative Assembly. So I think um, there are significant changes to this bill and um, it is a vastly improved bill from what it was. The main areas that were of concern had to do with the... Uh, it, well, we, we understood that there was an extensive nature of power that could be exercised because it was to respond to a health crisis and a public health crisis, but what was lacking was effective oversight, scrutiny, and to ensure that those mechanisms were appropriately being addressed um, for the public comfort and, and to make sure that everything was accountable. So these new laws have coincided with the old ones expiring and this new variant is not going to be the last new variant, but, uh, I mean, what does it give the power for the government and the Premier to do straight away if lockdowns or, or new measures are needed because of this, this new variant? Will those, those oversights be there straight away as of the 16th of December? So now, as most people are aware, because they would have heard this discussed over the last month or so, uh, since March of 2020, decisions have been able to be made by the Chief Health Officer. And those decisions... Um, it happened in, in, the, in the form of a direction which impacted on the whole state. Um, there wasn't the requirement um, in those directions that were given to really table reasons and the evidence for it, the health advice that was provided, or um, what human rights were being impacted and was, was that reasonable and proportionate. Now that, that power, that decision-making has been shifted to elected representatives, minister, um, who has to make sure that he consults with the health advice and, and every decision is based on health advice, but also to table that in Parliament to make sure that it's consistent with, um, you know, and, and reasonable and justifiable and demonstrably justifiable to be an incursion of human rights. But in addition to that, yes, there are declarations now that can be, there is a declaration that could be made by the Premier following the 16th that could deal with um, measures that were necessary or considered to be necessary to keep the, the population safe. Um, and that can happen and will happen most probably after the 16th. I mean, for two years, we've seen chief medical officers make decisions that elected officials really have been, been bound by in many ways. Is this a, a better outcome, um, that it, it is in those hands, well, in the hands of elected officials rather than unelected medical officers? Absolutely. Um, and I think that there is, I mean, we've talked about this before, Laura, but there's, there's such a level of fear and concern in the, in the population at the moment. And that's a result of having lived through, you know, 21 months of a lockdown, of, of, a, of a pandemic with significant lockdowns, with six lockdowns and, and many days of that and people being traumatised and people being wary and people feeling disempowered. What this should give us confidence is that we are, you know, a democracy and we do have a parliament and parliament needs to check the exercise of power by the executive. This provides much better and effective mechanisms to do that. There's a parliamentary committee that will do it. There is also a specific empowerment of the ombudsman to be able to review these things. If you are subject to a detention decision, there's now an independent mechanism for doing that, which was very different to the old regime. And so there's a transparency, there's an accountability, there's an ability to lift things up to the scrutiny and the light of day to be able to see whether it's appropriate or not and to make some noise if it's if it's not and to be able to affect change. I think that's really, really important. There's also a difference in this bill to the other bill, which is something that we advocated strongly for as well, which was there was a strong law enforcement emphasis um, and we, we didn't want that to be the case. And now there are no prison sentences that are on the table in relation to pandemic orders being infringed upon. And that's really important because what you want to do is you want to incentivise the public to comply with this and you want to make sure that it's not the stick that's out there that's compelling them, but actually you know, sensible, um, well-grounded well, well um, policy decisions. Tanya, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Laura.